Now, next slide, diabetes insipidus. The word diabetes itself means a fountain, flow of water, a fountain. Because the ancient Greeks, they know what they saw. My goodness, you're urinating all the time. It looks like a fountain. And such a sweet fountain, too. Which is the same word we get the word mellifluous. Sweet. Mellifluous. So, a sweet fountain. Now, insipid means bland. That means uh, basically no sugar in it. So, diabetes insipidus means you're urinating all the time and there's no sugar in it. it tastes bland. Okay? Now, all the consequences can be explained on the basis of a lack of ADH. Yeah, it's an ADH deficiency and ADH decreased effect. Decreased hormone and decreased effect. It's decreased hormone and decreased effect. Now, that can be from central. Central means I'm just not making the stuff. Central means I'm just not making it. Central means brain deficiency, decreased production. Decreased production. You see this? Familial causes of familial. I like that one. That's cynical. You've got a problem you don't know who to blame it on. Blame it on your parents. <laughs> blame it on the family. That's Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde said, the first half of my life was ruined. The first half of one's life is ruined by one's uh, family. Uh, excuse me. The first half of one's life is ruined by one's parents and the second half is ruined by one's children. I don't think that's harshly cynical. But the thing is, familial, it means idiopathic. Tumors, trauma, infection, anything, hypoxia that destroys the hypothalamus. Tumor, trauma, hypoxia, infection, anything that destroys the hypothalamus, you can't make ADH if the hypothalamus is destroyed. And that's why all these things down here say, look, trauma, destruction, sectioning is trauma, destruction, destruction, destruction. So this is basically the entire bottom paragraph here of central diabetes insipidus can be described by the word loss. Loss. Loss how? Loss. Infection, tumor, trauma, autoimmune, genetic. Nephrogenic. Nephro, kidney, genic, creation, origin. Well, that means that you have ADH, antidiuretic hormone, but it's just not having an effect. Nephrogenic means it's there, but it's not no effect. Now, let us look at this. Now, I have differential diagnosis following water deprivation. Now, this is a rather sadistic dominatrix sort of test where you basically take people who are dying of thirst or thirsty and you don't let them drink. You like this one? You're thirsty, huh? So they like practically tie people's hands behind their back and say, so you're thirsty, right? Well, repeat after me, all men are dogs, right? So what are deprivation tests? Well, you know, why don't you just ask people, hi, when you go to sleep at night, are you getting up every hour and urinating? Nocturia? That's the same thing as a water deprivation test. You know, every night when you go to sleep, you do your own water deprivation test. Are you getting up and urinating? Yeah, how much? How's your prostate? Are you getting up and urinating every hour? Well, the thing is, if you don't have a prostate problem and you're getting up and urinating every hour, that means you're continuing to make a high urine volume despite concentrating. You shouldn't be making that high urine volume at night. So let's look at these things here. Normal plasma, we said normal plasma osmolality is 280 to 300. Urine osmolality is on a huge range. Here it says 814. Just remember, normal values of urine osmolality are 50 or 100 to 1200. So 800 here in the top means normal. Normal osmolality in the plasma, 280 to 300. Normal. Now what ends up happening when you are not allowed to urinate, when you're not allowed, excuse me, when you're not allowed to drink, you're Antidiuretic hormones should go up so that your kidney retains the water. If you're deprived from drinking it here, you should retain it there. If you're deprived from making money, you should save money somewhere else. Urine osmolality after desmopressin. Remember the word desmopressin? Desmopressin is the same as antidiuretic hormone. Desmopressin, vasopressin. DDAVP are the same thing. Now, here is a person who has got water deprivation, the ADH level goes up, but after desmopressin, there's no improvement. 
Why? Well, because the desdopressin doesn't change anything because the ADH level is already up. It's kind of like being with someone who yells at you all the time. And now you say, well, yell at them some more. Well, there's no response. Why? Because they're yelling at you all the time. So the ADH is already yelling at the kidney tubule. Now, for central diabetes insipidus, you're ADH deficient. You're hemoconcentrated. And because you're hemoconcentrated, you should make antidiuretic hormone. But they're not able to. And because they're not able to, that's why this is a disease. This is a disease because they're not able to concentrate the urine. This is a disease because it's simple ADH deficiency. Without antidiuretic hormone, the urine goes out extremely dilute. Without the antidiuretic hormone, the urine goes out extremely dilute. Without the diuretic, antidiuretic hormone. So that's why after the antidiuretic hormone, there's a big jump up. See here, there's a, 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 a urine osmolality of only 100. Now there's a urine osmolality of 600. That's because there's a huge response because there's an ADH deficiency. It's basically saying, can you measure the concentration before and after this substance which should concentrate the urine? Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is, in a way, showing you here, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is saying, well, you're again hemoconcentrated. You have a low urine osmolality. Well, what's the difference here? Is because in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, despite the high ADH level, there is no response. There's no response. And even though I give you the ADH, there's still no response despite administering a squirt of antidiuretic hormone. Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is like this. Despite water deprivation, your urine concentration does not go up. But I give you the ADH, and there's still no improvement. Why? Because they got a ton of ADH. There's just no effect on the kidney tubule. They have a ton of antidiuretic hormone. There's just no effect on the kidney tubule. Now, SIADH. Basically, when you have too much antidiuretic hormone, it's like the opposite of diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus is too little antidiuretic hormone. SIADH is too much antidiuretic hormone. They're exact opposites of each other. Well, what you see here is that you can have production in the lung, but you can also have things that are going to happen in the brain. Anything in the brain can cause SIDH. We don't know why. Anything that happens in the lung can cause SIDH. We don't know why. Certain drugs has this as an adverse effect, most commonly sulfonylureas, and cancers. So SIDH, anything in the brain, stroke, tumor, trauma, hypoxia, subdural, epidural, subarachnoid hemorrhage, anything, anything in the lung, pneumonia, to be, cancer, atelectasis, trauma, pulmonary embolus, drugs and cancer, SIDH, any lung, any brain, drugs and cancer, 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 for SIDH, too much. Now, what happens is because you got all this antidiuretic hormone, you retain all this water, which makes you hypoosmolar, and you excrete the sodium. You retain the water abnormally, and you excrete the sodium. That's actually the very definition of SIDH. Why are you concentrating that urine so much when you want to get rid of the water? It's an inappropriate concentration of urine despite the fact that you're hyponatremic. If you are poor, you shouldn't be urinating out, pissing away your money. If you are a, a, a starving, you shouldn't be throwing away your food. And if you are hypoosmolar and have too much water in you and hypoosmolar, you shouldn't be pissing away your osmoles and your sodium. My blood level of sodium is very low. How come I'm putting in my urine? Well, it's a disease, that's why, SIADH. So this is the whole point. You have increased water retention because of antidiuretic hormone. You have low sodium, hyponatremia. Why? Because you're retaining the water, the salt goes down in your body. You're retaining the water in your body, the salt level goes down. Euvolemic means normal volume status. That means I'm not dehydrated and I have no edema. I'm not dehydrated, but I have no edema. I'm not dehydrated, 
But on the other hand, I'm not fluid overloaded either. So the question will specifically say, no edema, no Rawls, no JVD. On the other hand, not orthostatic either. Normal volume status. Now, because of the volume status being up, the reason, oh, why you start to lose all the salt too, is the volume status, largeness is detected in the heart, increases atrial natriuretic peptide, and you urinate out the sodium. You urinate out the sodium. And you inappropriately concentrate the urine. Why is my urine osmolality so high when I'm dying of hyponatremia? Uh, uh, now, the major, the, uh, the major treatment of SIDH is to restrict fluids, not pour on the salt. If you have SIDH, we restrict the fluids and hold on to the volume. We don't put you on the pizza, potato, chip, and uh, kielbasa diet. Giving salt won't help because SIDH is a water problem, not a salt problem. It's a water problem, not a salt problem. I'm retaining too much water. I'm not, okay? I'm retaining too much water, not that I'm excreting too much salt. I'm retaining too much water. Well, this next slide is very busy. Now, how do we take this very busy slide and make it small? You know our entire methodology of things to be able to make things miniature, to see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in one hour. So, how do we miniaturize this? Well, the first thing, you see this thing where it says perm of collecting ducts? Oh, that's silly. How can you put a perm in a collecting duct? Oh, I could think you put in a few highlights. So how do you put a perm in a collecting duct? Well, that's permeability. Permeability of the collecting duct. Now, here's the big issue. When the collecting duct is permeable, does that mean the water goes in or the water goes out? When the collecting duct is permeable, does that mean the water is going to come back in or the water is going to come out? And the answer for permeability of collecting duct is that when the collecting duct is more permeable, water comes out of the duct and stays in the body. I'm in a duct. I'm in a duct. Oh, I'm very hypotonic. I'm hypotonic. When the collecting duct is permeable, the water comes out of the collecting duct and into the interstitium. The water comes out of the collecting duct and back into the body. So when the collecting duct is more permeable, it means water reabsorption. When the collecting duct is permeable, we're gonna take it back in. We're gonna excrete a more concentrated urine then. Oh, in the permeable collecting duct, we're concentrating the urine. Now you see, that's why in diabetes insipidus, which is a deficiency of ADH, the collecting duct is not permeable. And the collecting duct is not permeable, that's the same thing as saying excreting a dilute urine or a concentrated urine. When the permeable collecting duct permeability is down, such as diabetes insipidus, you're going to excrete a dilute urine. That means instead of reabsorbing the water, it's going to be excreted. Now, in dehydration, we have increased permeability. We have increased permeability because we want to reabsorb the water. Because we want to reabsorb the water. Now, in SIADH, we have the same increased permeability. In this case, it's pathological. We don't want that increased permeability. But it's the same increased permeability, meaning that you're reabsorbing the water. The only difference is, is that in dehydration, the defect starts with this. Decreased volume, decreased volume results in increased permeability. So here what happens is it starts here first, starts here with the decreased fluid volume. The decreased volume in dehydration results in stimulation of the receptors in the heart. Remember, the heart is the volume. I tell largeness in my heart. If my heart detects the size, the volume, 
whereas the osmo receptors, oh, look at the osmo receptors. The osmo receptors say, ooh, you're concentrated. But either one, in dehydration, in dehydration, what happens is we get decreased volume and increased osmolality, which are the two stimulants for more antidiuretic hormone. Now, that's not pathologic. That's what should happen. When you have decreased volume and increased osmolality, you should have increased permeability, so I retain the water. That's normal. Now, in SIDH, it goes the other way around. In SIDH, we are starting with the fact that we have too much permeability. We have too much permeability because we've got too much ADH. We've got too much permeability, got too much ADH. That, when you're reabsorbing the water, having a decreased urine flow, we're retaining the water in SIDH, retaining the water, but what ends up happening is that the volume of the fluids and the osmolality are becoming pathologically changed. So in SIDH, we have an abnormally increased ductal permeability, we reabsorb the water, and then the ECF and ICF volumes go up, the osmolality go down, it's pathological. They were normal they got abnormally changed. If this slide looks difficult, it's because it is difficult. And it starts with the fact that permeability doesn't mean you lose water. Permeability in the collecting duct means you retain water. Permeability here doesn't mean you lose water. Permeability in a collecting duct means you retain the water. Now, in diabetes insipidus, all ADH things start at the collecting duct. The ADH things start at the collecting duct. And here, you start at the collecting duct by decreasing the permeability, which means you urinate out more water. And because you're urinating out more water, the osmolality must go down. Now, urine flow and urine osmolality always travel in opposite directions. If the flow of urine is up, the osmolality is down. If the flow of urine is down, the osmolality is up. There is no such thing as increasing flow and increasing osmolality. If you see increased flow and increased osmolality at the same time, you should report it in the Bible because it's a miracle. Not possible, not even in mutants. So, diabetes insipidus. I have decreased permeability of the collecting duct, which is making me piss out all my volume. If I'm urinating out all my volume, if I'm urinating out all my volume, it means the volume is not here in my body. If I'm urinating out all my volume, it means the volume is not here in my body. So every time you see urine flow in one direction, you see the, vo eat the volumes in the fluid in the body in the opposite direction. Look, here, urine flow up, urine vo body volume down. Urine volume, okay? So they tend to be in the opposite direction. Finally, primary polydipsia. And in primary polydipsia, it's very straightforward. We're drinking a lot of water. We're drinking too much water. Our ECF and ICF volumes go up. These increased bodily volumes shut off ADH. When you shut off ADH, you decrease permeability. When you shut off ADH, you decrease permeability. And remember, decreased permeability means increased urine flow, increased urine loss. Decreased Permeability means that the water in the tube bill is not coming back in the body. It's going out and hitting the East River, going down into the toilet, going down. Ooh, look, Gulf of Mexico. There it is.